Today I realized that the character that we downloaded, this free character, is uh, generic as a rig. Um, you want this to be a humanoid because there's a lot of humanoid animations out there that you can use. So I'm not going to use this character. Instead, I'm going to go back to the Unity Atsa store, and there's a character that I free character that I found called Bodyguards. I'm going to download this. I'm going to open this in Unity. Import it. Import all. And I'm going to use this instead. Once that's done, let's go back to the scene. And we're going to find the prefab for the character that we just downloaded. Okay, we can tell that this is a humanoid. We're going to drag it in. I'm going to delete the previous character. Delete it. It's going to break the prefab, but that's okay. I'm just going to drag this into the cube. So it's under the cube, and I'm going to override this prefab. Drag it to the previous cube. And now we have a new cube with a new character. And if you have anything changed in the scene, you might notice this little mark there. So let's make sure that we save. Control S and save the scene. Don't worry for now if you don't understand what a prefab is and what this blue letters mean. Um, I'm going to make another video that is entirely based on understanding what a prefab is in Unity. So don't worry. For now, you can just follow along. And let me rename this into something new, Suited Man. And let me organize the folders a little bit. I'm going to create a folder and call it um, Bear Games. And I'm also going to delete the character that we previously downloaded because we're not going to use it anymore. I find it really important to organize things, especially later when you start making a lot of changes. You can do this however you want it to, but for me, I just like to put everything under a folder that I created. I like to divide it into characters, managers, and scenes, and so on. And everything that I imported from the Unity Asset Store, I just keep them where they are in their default folder. And let me just make one more change. I'm going to delete this virtual input manager. Instead of having this as a game object, I'm just going to delete it, and I'm going to keep it in the project folder, and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to create a new script called Singleton. Okay. For this, you have to understand the concept of inheritance um, as well as generic type. That's probably for another video, a couple of videos actually, but even if you don't understand, just follow for now. I'm going to turn this into the base class where a lot of managers like the input device managers can just inherit from. How do you spell behavior? Okay. It's just the same type of singletons uh, coded in a different way. So you have one instance, and you also have a public variable that you can call, but it's a generic T. When you call that instance, uh, the computer is going to, well, the script is going to always look for an instance that is not null. But if it's null, it means we have to create a new instance. Give me a sec. Type of T. Okay, wait, this should be here. 
If there is no instance, we create a new one. Call it object, a new game object. And we want that instance to have the component and whatever that T may be. And we'll name it the same as the same name as a script is named. And then return the instance. A little spell mistake here. Instance. And we're done. Now let's go to the virtual input manager that we created last time. Find it here. Double click. Instead of doing all this, delete. Delete everything. Except for the variables that we're going to use. We're going to just inherit from that singleton and we're done so if we go back to unity we already deleted the the input device manager from the hierarchy but after we wrote the that singleton script as soon as any script tries to access it if there is no instance uh, the script is going to create it automatically so let's click play you'll see it being created here and the game works as before all right, now let's get to the fun part. Uh, go to Mixamo.com. This is a site that I use frequently. Uh, just create an account and log in. I just log in with my Google account. And I'm going to look for an animation called Idle. Pick anyone you like and download. Uh, I like to do it at 60 frames per second. Download it. Once it's downloaded, all you have to do is drag it in. Let me just create a folder first. Go to the folder you downloaded and drag it in. Okay. And you want to change this to humanoid apply, configure, see all those things that don't match. All you have to do is uh, turn it into a sample t-bind pose. Some of the fingers and these little details might not match perfectly, but that's all right. Click apply, done. Go to animation tab, change the name, idle, eh, just idle. Check these boxes here. See, it works. The character is barely moving in this animation, but that's fine. Apply. And we don't need materials for animations, so just get rid of it. Now let's go back to the hierarchy. You'll see that the controller is empty. We're going to create a controller for this. Create animator controller name it suited man again i like to name it the same things just so that i don't get confused and we drag this into the suited man here now that it's in apply if you double click on the animator the animator window will open up and we just drag in the animation that we downloaded and since this is the only animation right now, it's already set it as a default state. Let's click play, see if it works. And now we have the idle animation. I'm not going to render the cube anymore. You can just turn off the render. Click apply. And let's save the scene. Now here's the tricky part. You want to make the character walk. First, let's look for a walk animation. Okay. Find one that you like and download it like we just did. Drag it in. And we do the same thing. Turn it into humanoid. Apply. Configure. Turn it into a T-pose. Apply. Done. Change the name walking 
it's looping. Just use the default settings. I don't want the animator to move the character, so check this one off. And we're not going to use the materials. Let's go back to the character. And I'm going to make sure that the root motion is checked off. Root motion means the transform information or the positional information from the animation is going to affect the player's movement. So if you have a root motion, and if you have the animation that is literally walking forward, just by playing the animation, the character is going to move forward. I don't want that. I usually like controlling uh, the, the character with my own script. I'm going to go to the animator window, and I'm going to drag the walking animation in. Okay, now we have two animations in the controller. One is by default, so when you click play, this is just going to play automatically. In order for the character to transition from this to walking, you have to make a transition. And you also want the transition to go back to idle. The question is when. If you click on these transitional arrows, a bunch of options come up. And you want to blend the animations together. Just adjust the graph depending on how you like it. Same thing with the other animation. Adjust the graph. Okay. You don't want an exit time because we're controlling the exit. Let's create a parameter. A bull parameter called move. And here, let's add a condition, the move condition. If move is true, uh, you want the character to transition to a walking animation. If it's false, then you want the char character to transit back to the idle. So let's click play. If you click on this, the character will now animate to the walking animation. Click on it again to turn it off. It goes back to idle and back and forth. Obviously, the player is not going to have access to this. We're going to create a script for this. So let's exit play mode. And remember this script, let's change the name. It's not going to be temporary anymore, I guess. Let's call it uh, character control because this script is going to control the character. Go into the code and you also got to change the name here. Character control. And let's go back to the Unity editor and make sure that the script is there. Sometimes if you change the name, the script just gets lost, you have to add it again. Just make sure that this script is in there and it's working all right. We're going to create a variable called animator. Animator. Okay. You're not going to be able to name the variable the same as the class name. So since it's case sensitive, I'm just going to call it animator. And whenever the character is moving, you want the animator to change uh, the parameter that we created. Set bull. Remember the name, it was called move, I think. If the character is moving, it's true. Same thing with the left. If the character is moving, it's true. If the character is not moving, it should be false. There we go. And let me add another line here. If we have a case where neither move right or move left is triggered, like none of them is triggered. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. In this case, again, we don't want the animation triggered. Okay. Let's go to the suited man. And the animator here is none. We have to drag in the animator into the script and click apply. Now if we click play, it should work. Okay. The character is moving a little too fast compared to the animation, so let's fix it. Two maybe. There we go. Much better. Let me add one more update before I finish this video. 
if we go back to the character control, I don't like typing in letters like this. So I'm going to create an enum. And I'm going to make it public. So it's going to be accessible anywhere. And let's call it transition parameters, parameter. And I'm going to type it here. And I'm going to use this enum whenever I'm going to refer to the transition. So I'm going to delete the string here. Transition, oops, transition parameter move. And you want to turn it into a string. Okay, and then I'm going to copy paste it to all the letters below. It's the same thing, it's just a matter of how you code it. This also helps me get rid of the spelling mistakes. Okay, let's go back and play. Should be exactly the same. And there we have it. Okay, that's it for today's video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Some of the things I just passed by without explaining too much. I couldn't stop at every single point where we need some explanation on basic programming knowledge. I think I'm going to create separate videos for those things. So please let me know if anything is confusing at all. But for now, everything should work fine if you just follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.